Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as, as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Rhonda Petit, who's over in the Philadelphia area. How are you doing, Rhonda? I'm doing great. How are you doing, John? I'm doing absolutely fantastic. And uh, and what we're going to talk about today with Rhonda is we're going to talk about how sales selling is 95% mindset and 5% um, mechanical, which is fantastic. Um, and Rhonda is a sales and business uh, peak performance coach with 35 years sales experience in corporate America, Fortune 500,000 companies. And your book is The Spirit of Selling, you, uh, Using Universal Laws for Sales Success. Absolutely. So um, what I always like to ask people sometimes, Rhonda, is at the very beginning is, what, what was the genesis of this book? Um, you know, why did you write it in the first place? Because I love your, I, I, I love, uh, I love the, the phrase that you use, like, you know, there's no life in mechanics. The spirit is in, the spirit is in the principle. So tell me about the genesis of the book. Sure, happy to. Uh, in 2019, I guess, um, I, no, it was right after the, in 2020, excuse me, 2019, I went to a Matrix event with the great late Bob Proctor. And mm. uh, he started Matrix, I was getting in, starting my coaching business. And the Matrix was a place where you can go to network with different people and um, you know, really build out your business and, and learn some things about multiple streams of income. Anyway, you know, he was just always talking about these universal laws. And the more that I studied them and the more that I understood them, I said, oh my gosh, I wish I would have known all this stuff when I was 21, when I started selling, because I've been, in, you know, I, I, all I've mm -hmm. ever done was sales and I love sales and I'm always, I've, I've done really, really well with it. But there were times when, you know, I hit, I hit some glass ceilings and I didn't really understand what was going on. So I said, you know, um, so in 2020 after when, you know, I came back after March in, in the pandemic hit, uh, there was a group, I, I got on some call and some woman was talking about writing books and she, she's, you know, I got intrigued and I said, you know, I got to write this <laughs> because <laughs> if people had, you know, more people, more people have this information and the, they truly understand the principles behind selling. You don't, you won't even sound mechanical anymore because it'll, you'll just be able to, you'll know what you're doing and why you're doing it. So mm -hmm. you can naturally just be you and apply the laws and, and really serve people in a powerful way. So that's how that book came out. And it took Excellent. about a year, uh, a, a year and a half to write. Oh, well, well done. Excellent. And, uh, you know, what's interesting, yeah, you said, I wish you'd known these, I wish I'd known these things earlier. Well, you know, that's, that happens to all of us, doesn't it? It's like, uh, it's like that old saying, isn't it? That, uh, youth is wasted on the young. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but here's an interesting thing, right? I mean, getting, getting into the book itself and some of these, uh, laws or mindsets, uh, here, I like this one where you say, you know, first of all, you say there's a maze of misconceptions about sales. You say, do you judge money or expect it? That, that's an interesting way of putting it. What do you what do you mean by that? Well, I think a lot of times we, you know, people don't really understand what money is. Money is energy, right? And money um, comes where service is rendered and where it's where it's appreciated. And a lot of judgments, I think, happen when you know, what people think about money, right? And mm -hmm. a lot of those negative perceptions that we might have picked up somewhere from Uncle Jed and Aunt Nellie from 200 years ago or whatever, wherever they came from, right? Um, mm -hmm. When you're selling, you really have to get those blocks and those definitions and those meanings clear so that you um, can expect that you're going to receive money. Because if you render service, that's why you are in a sale. It's mm -hmm. because of service rendered. And so you should absolutely expect that there's going to be money coming as a result. I think a lot of times people get caught up in, you know, there's the saying of there's two incomes, psychic income and your monetary income. And sometimes those beliefs 
if they're negative towards money, you know, people can do a lot of service for people and they'll get their psychic income and they'll feel good because they're giving. Right. Mm -hmm. But they'll block the, the money that comes, you know, from coming into them. And mm -hmm. that's a big problem in, because if you're going to be successful in selling, you've got to realize the more service you render and the more you multiply and increase the quality and the quantity of what you're going to put out, the money's going to come unless you block it. Yeah. What, what's really interesting, I think, uh, number one, I, I, I always found fascinating is that there's so many people who default into the profession of sales, right? So maybe go to college, do a marketing degree or social science, and then come out and go, oh, there's no, there doesn't seem to be very many jobs in that. So I'll go into sales and then sort of often get stuck in it. So number one, they defaulted into a role and then they've taken sort of internalized all the negative stereotypes that are out there. And therefore they're almost being apologetic when they sell. And as you said, I mean, you'll find people who are really, who are pretty good, but they get to that point of asking for the sale and, you know, they, they fall apart. Yeah. I think, um, you know, you have to realize when you're selling your, you're making composites with, with people, you're, you're, um, when two become one, right? So when you're really mm -hmm. in it for the interest of the other person, um, you're, it's going to be a natural thing that that sale can, can evolve. Uh, but again, these misconceptions in my, the first chapter or second chapter of misconceptions about selling mm -hmm. is that there's a lot of connotations of a car artist. And if you look at a Venn diagram between a, a professional and a con mm -hmm. artist, the thing in the middle that, that, is the same is that they're very good persuaders, but the difference mm. in, in where their focus is, the pro is totally focused on the client and serving mm. the client powerfully, right? Trying to figure out what is it that they want and helping to facilitate them to get what they want. So it's all about serving them where a con artist is, what am I going to get out of this deal? And they're thinking about themselves. And I think yeah. if people just get that part, it's a little easier to say, Oh, okay. I want to be a pro. Not a con. Yeah, <laughs> I like right? that. Pro, pro and not a con. I love it. And the other thing that you mentioned here is selling from the inside out, the laws of, of Dharma. Uh, could you explain that a little bit? Because I think sometimes, and maybe even in sales, maybe the profession as a whole over the years has been, there's been some kind of like attributes of, you know, you got to be really hard nosed and all of this. And, and uh, so the idea of spirituality and mindset and all of that, that seems anathema to some people. But to talk to me about the, the law of Dharma. Sure. The law of Dharma states that we've all come to take a journey on this planet for a reason. Right. So and mm -hmm. and it's, you know, people call it purpose. Uh, you know, it, it, it's Dhar Dharma is basically your purpose. It's your it's the essence of who you are. It doesn't change. It's what you love to do. It's uh, those, those, you know, that that fulfillment that you feel when you're get, you're using your talents, right? We all have unique talents, like mm -hmm. John Golden. There's no, there's nobody else like you, and you're there'll never be another yeah. one of you on the planet, right? Yeah, and I, I hear everybody say, "Thank goodness for that." <laughs> no, but you have your <laughs> right, but you have that unique talent, and when that talent gets put to to serving others that's where you get your joy and fulfillment from, right? Mm. So the spirituality of it and getting into the spirit of selling and getting into universal law is realizing that you're a creator, right? You're born mm. in the image of your creator and you're here to create. And what, it, you know, when we're selling, we're creating solutions to problems, right? We're putting, we're creating order where order doesn't exist. And so the spirituality part of it is, the the stuff that gets you into action and what gets what gets people into action and moving you know and enthusiasm excitement when they mm -hmm. really emotionally engage with something um and that emotional source that we all have is in our subconscious mind and our subconscious mind is running by universal law now you 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 know i don't make up the rules but you've got to understand <laughs> how it works right and <laughs> And so when you're selling your, you know, when you, when you get the first thing you do is you show up in your attitude, right. To your, to your mm -hmm. client. Now what you're creating is like this atmosphere of high energy where, and, and you want to get them to know, like, and trust you. So your energy, you know, you want it to be positive and you want to hold that attitude for them, even if they're having a bad day. 
and be able to have that empathy and compassion, but still hold that attitude and kind of control the, the, the flow with your attitude. So the spirituality thing is all coming from that subconscious mind, which is your emotional mind. And that's what, what when, when anything that you've ever purchased or anything that you've ever sold, like you purchase it because of the way it makes it you feel. That's mm -hmm. why you have what you have in your closet, the car you drive, the clothes you wear, all that stuff is because of the way it feels. And you made mm -hmm. those decisions based on an emotion. But the other thing you got to remember is that um, you're, you're always helping people move into action by activating their imagination. And that's the mindset stuff that you have to understand. And when you, when you talk to them, you listen to what they want. And John, you told me what you want. And I, I get the first thing I do is get my that picture in my mind, like, OK, what does it look like and what else does he want? And I'm, I'm picturing it. Right. So I get an image in my mind. And the minute you you you're going to feel emotionally that I get you. Right. Because I'm saying mm -hmm. it back to you, yeah. trying to understand the whole thing. Well, we just made an emotional composite. We're one. Two became one. Now we're working together. You know, they they can feel that you're working together to help your to help them get where they want. And that's that's a powerful, most most powerful step that you got to do in the beginning is get them to know, like, and trust you. Yeah, and and that's a just a great point that you made there, and a, and a great uh, and a great example. Um, because at the end of the day, there's nothing that makes any of us feel better than when we feel listened to and mm. understood. And and it's such a simple concept, but it's still one that people struggle with. And especially today, because we live in this world of like, I, I love this phrase when people say to me, oh, I'm, I'm busier than I've ever been. And I always say, well, are you? Or are you more distracted than you've ever been? Because I would I would reckon that you're probably more distracted than you've ever been. You're not actually busier because if you cut out all the distractions, you probably have plenty of time. But you've got to get your head in the game, right? And you've got to yes. focus and you've got to actively listen and really be. And I guess it comes down to unlocking the, you know, your your kind of intellectual curiosity about really understanding and finding out what's going on and the creative side. So that's a very different picture of sales, isn't it? When you're thinking about being creative and, and you know, all of that. I mean, it's a totally different approach to thinking, well, I'm just here schlepping something. Exactly. Absolutely. Because... <laughs> Because that's, but if you, if you start adopting that attitude that you, you're really creating and you're facilitating people through the blocks, like when you get a met, a, a objections in a selling process, um, you're just, you're just there to help them get the blocks out of the way so they can go get what they want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah no, ab ab uh, no, absolutely. And I think uh, one of the other parts that I, I love what you uh, talk about here is, you know, get into the flow and ride the surf. I say that because my son just came back from surfing. So it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but I like that idea because getting into the flow, right in the surf, like if you take, you know, this the ocean of the sea as analogy is you can't fight it. Right. You can't yes. decide like, well, there's here's the tides going this way and it's flowing really. So I'm going to swim against it because that never works. So you have to figure out which way it's going and get into the flow. So talk a little bit about that, getting into the flow and riding the surf. Sure. Um, so, so you, we all have emotional guidance systems, right? And when, and, and we all are living on this earth where we're going to have chaos and, you know, tragedy and, you know, hailstorms and, you know, it's just part of the process. I mean, we didn't make mm -hmm. up the rules, but we're all going yeah. through it, but the, right. But the question is when that happens, how, how much, how long do you stay in that that state of currency, um, as opposed to flipping to intentionality and what you can create in that state. So I like the surf is, is, you know, you have contrast, but can you ride the waves because you, you change what, what you focus on, right? In one of the mm -hmm. chapters I have where your energy goes, the, the, where your focus goes, the energy flows, mm -hmm. right? So if, when you when you're riding the surf, um, you're you're feeling maybe those emotions that come when you get hit with chaos or a tragedy or different things like that. You feel it, but you let it go and you don't stay in that state, because if you stay in that state that's typically perceived by most out there as negative, 
Mm -hmm. um, you're just attracting more of that to you. But if you look at it and say, okay, it's contrast. Okay. Here's another opportunity for my, me to create, or where is the opportunity? And you can flip yourself. If you train your mind to do that, um, you're going to ride the surf. I mean, you're just going to have a good time because you're not going to get caught up in, like you said, the force or pushing against mm -hmm. the waves or anything. You're just going to kind of flow with them and look for opportunities. And the law of polarity says you always got positive and negative. So it, the question is mentally for your mindset, how fast do you flip to the positive channel? Yeah, I, I agree. And here's one other thing I want to ask you about. Okay. So if you decide to make, if somebody's deciding, okay, read your book and I want to make a change and I want to, I want to get my mindset right. I want to figure out my purpose and become, you know, put out more positivity into the world. Well, that's, that's a great start, but sometimes you're not in the environment. You're not in the optimal environment to do that, right? You're not surrounded by the right people, all of that. So there are other things that you might have to do that people find often find really difficult that and, and allows allows it to prevent them from actually moving out of where they are today um yes it can be difficult um and i think you know you if you look at the environment you can get your you can get information from three sources right infinite intelligence or your intuition books or the people that you're hanging out with. And maybe you mm -hmm. are, if you're in that situation of an environment, I think the first thing is when you recognize it, that's good because you can start to try to see how you can get out of that environment and get into one that's a little bit more positive for you, where you can get access to mentors or different people to kind of get you on a higher frequency. But infinite intelligence, you know, the whole thing about knowing thyself and taking direction from the universe you know, through meditation and quiet and quieting the mind and being able to hear and go with your guts, your gut feels, because you're, you're always getting information from, you know, infinite intelligence on, you know, in your higher self as to where you're supposed to go or what you're supposed to do. But if you're in a state of fear, you won't hear it. So a big benefit of, you know, getting meditate meditation and in general is to get back into that observer mode of quieting out the noise. You know, why, why do you meditate, close your eyes and close all that stuff off? You're trying to close all the chaos that's going on outside of you and just get into yourself and then feel that direction from within, which is your intuition. And that can be very powerful for anyone. I highly recommend yeah. it. Well, no, I 100% I agree with you. And I think it's unfortunate, again, going back to the kind of world and the pervasive culture we live in today, that this idea of, of forget meditation, this idea of even spending a few quiet seconds with yourself is almost like counterculture because everybody is distracted all the time. You know, we have kids now addicted to their phones because of the dopamine hits they get every time they scroll through TikTok. So, I totally agree with what you're saying is, but it, it takes, I think today people have to actually make that conscious decision and say, I'm going to, I'm going to remove all of this stuff for a while. I'm going to actually be, be with my own thoughts and get to know myself a little bit better. And that just see, and like I said, that just seems to be something that's not, people don't advocate for enough or um, a lot of people just, you know, have and don't do, they just don't do because they're too busy being distracted. Yeah. And it's unfortunate that, you know, it's like, uh, what is it? The fear of missing out and, you know, distraction. Yeah. And, and the reason they don't, they kind of hit, they, you get in a complacent state because of that is because you're not taking control of your mind and focusing on your goal, for example, like, you know, people that are successful and, you know, you know in sales that have, you know, or people that have built mil millions and billions of dollars business, you know, they're just doing some different things as far as being vigilant with their mind. They're, they're deciding what they're going to shut off. You know, it's called thinking. Most people don't realize this, but you know, we, we can either your conscious mind is, you, is where you can create and control the knob and control the flow that we were talking about. Right. So mm -hmm. you, it's, it's like a tuning knob that you can decide what you're going to focus your thoughts on. But when you're, if you, and you can reject things or only focus on, you can originate, accept an idea or reject an idea. 
And the problem with most people is they don't think they just accept whatever's going on in the outside and the outside's running them. So that's why they're getting run from the outside in instead of the inside out. And why I say sell from the inside out is when you're centered and you get to choose the attitude that you're going to bring, you're going to hold your 10 out of 10 for your client and you're in a calm state and you're not stressed out you're going to you're going to hear that intuition you're going to be guided and and you're going to provide order for the person you're selling to because I'll tell you what guys if you're going in there and you get you got all these distractions your mind's all over the place and then you're trying to talk to somebody else they're going to pick up you don't have order in their mind they're not, why are you going to listen to them <laughs> right <laughs> Yeah, I know. I I think that's a perfect way a perfect way of putting it, and and I get I love that because um, I'm a big believer in intuition and and myself and um, the you're correct. I mean, absolutely in the fact that if you're distracted and everything's going on crazy, I mean, you, your intuition's not going to get a word in edgewise, right? You know, you right. need you need to you need some space for your intuition to to kick in. And I agree with you. If you're trying to sell to somebody and you look like you're scattered and all over the place, my goodness, why would I want to buy from you? Yeah, because your attitude is like how you show up, like what you bring to the party and people are picking up what you're putting down, whether you're <laughs> saying it or not. <laughs> right? No, I'm, I'm, absolutely. We all speak the law, the law of vibration, folks. We all speak the law of vibration. The, absolutely. And just at the at the end uh, of your book, I, I always love you. You mentioned like the Phoenix. Uh, what, what What's that? Uh, what's the reference there? It's just because Phoenix is is uh, the Phoenix is very uh, it's a very big symbol in Irish history. Right? Yes. Yes. The Phoenix is transformation. You know, at mm -hmm. the beginning of the book, I talk, are you ready for transformation? Right. And at the end of the book, I'm, you know, telling you about the the, the secret of the game is this continual open. Everything we have in life is of, because of who we are. And every time you work on you, you know, the marketplace pays for value and you increase your awareness, that phoenix, that means that you're going to probably have to leave the old person behind. You know, you want more, you want to sell more or whatever. You're going to mm -hmm. have to leave that old self-image behind and you're going to have to say, thank you very much for getting me this far, but no more. And you have to create a whole new one. You know, we're creators. Yeah. We we have the ability to do that. But, you know, it's a process of transformation. And just think of it like, you know, if I have my glasses in my right hand and I, I can't I can't get anything new in my right hand until I let go. And so mm -hmm. you have to the 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 end of the book is really about, you know, embracing the information, the transformation, be willing to let go to grow and rise again, just like a phoenix. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, we're supposed to grow and evolve. We're not supposed to stay, you know, stagnant. And I think that sometimes when people hear, well, oh, what do you mean I have to reinvent myself? And you go, no, you've got to create something better. And the other thing is, you know, why wouldn't you want to get better? Why wouldn't you want to continue to evolve? I mean, good luck to you if you think you've reached the height of like, you know, evolution. <laughs> yeah, know exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, so listen, um, Rhonda, this has been fantastic. And by the way, actually, in one one company I ran a number of years back, uh, one of the things I did, I got this like eight foot, I think it was eight or nine foot um, wall uh, sticker of a massive phoenix uh -huh. on the wall. Put that in the office, out in the, out in the center of the office for everybody, because I was saying, you know, this company, we're going to be reborn now. We're going to rise like the phoenix, bigger, stronger, more beautiful than ever. Yes. And, uh, you know, always use that as the center point for the uh, center point of the organization. Love it. Love it. That's yeah. the way to go. Everett. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so all of Rhonda's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. So I uh, have a coaching business. Um, I, I'm in, in the uh, help individuals predominantly in the sales organization of B2B because all my experience has been in B2B. Um, and I have group coaching. I have individual coaching and I do sales training. And all that information can be found on my website, um, which is www.3x5coaching.com. So that's 3x5, like a 3x5 card because I'm all about goals. And I uh, love to talk to you there, find you there. I have a, um, if you, if you sign up, there's a newsletter. I do the transformation times. It comes out six times a year. And I always have a, um, 
a, a free workshop every month. So you can find out details and register for those if, if you'd like to know more. Um, and I really Perfect. appreciate the time. Yeah. And, uh, and don't forget also the book is called the spirit of selling using universal laws for sales success. And again, it'll be below, below the video. Um, listen, thanks again, Rhonda. This was fantastic. Thank you all for watching and listening and I will see you all again soon. Yeah.